Hi, welcome to Lagoons Do A Better TV, where we provide bite-sized segments to help your lagoon do it better. I'm Patrick Hill from Triple Point Environmental, and here we're going to talk about land application. Uh, the basics of it, you know, the types of land application there are, the pros and the cons, and uh, ultimately how land application can be enhanced. So, land application uh, basically defined is where you take your effluent as, and, and as opposed to discharging it into the local river or stream, you actually irrigate land up with it. Uh, what you call land apply is the technical term. And there are different types of land application. There's slow rate, which is sort of the most common uh, type of land application. And that's where you're, you're irrigating across a large surface area or field at a very slow rate uh, in order to allow the plants uh, initially to take up the nutrients that are left in the water after it finishes through your lagoon system but also then ultimately the microbes to break down those nutrients as well once they get into the soil. The second most common type you see is what we call rapid infiltration and rapid infiltration is where you have these rapid infiltration beds and the water actually percolates through the ground uh, and uses mother nature's filter uh, through the different layers of, uh, uh, of ground, sand, clay, whatever it may be, until it gets back down into the, uh, the, to the groundwater. Uh, and then finally, you also have what's called subsurface drip irrigation. And this is kind of a newer uh, form of land application. It's maybe only been popular for the last 10 or 15 years. And that's where you bury subsurface irrigation lines that ultimately just slow, slowly drip water into the ground where it can be taken up by the plants and nutrients and the, and the microbes ultimately in the soil. So the advantages of this type of approach is you don't have to do nutrient removal. So in a lot of states where they're getting ammonia limits on lagoons or uh, phosphorus limits or even total nitrogen limits to some extent, um, you don't have a discharge permit. So you don't have to remove the ammonia. It's an alternative basically to putting in a nitrification system like our nitrox system. Um, and so you have a no discharge permit. So that's obviously a huge advantage. Uh, one less thing to worry about. Um, it can, in, in the case of rapid infiltration basins, you know, you can actually recharge aquifers this way. Uh, and once it makes, the water makes its way through Mother Nature's filter, through the ground into the aquifer, it could be very clean. It's very, got a lot of minerals in it. So that can be a real positive. Um, the third sort of pro is that, you know, it provides nutrients for, this, for the soil. You know, and so, you know, the plants take up those nutrients. They're not just put into the local stream or river where they ultimately can be a contaminant. They're, they're taken up by plants which want to, to consume them. So a lot of land application systems will grow, you know, hay basically. Uh, and they'll have somebody come in once a year and they'll, they'll cut down and bale out and take out the hay uh, through the system. Uh, you know, in the land and basically they just don't pay the people to do it and the people take the hay and they sell the hay and it's sort of just a sustainable thing. Um, and then finally, you know, it just prevents these pollutants from getting into the waterways, right? The potential pollutants that be coming out of your lagoon system, right? Which can be potentially harmful uh, if they're in excess supply. Um, so those are the main pros. Now on the con side, I think People really focus on those pros in my experience and they don't necessarily look as hard on the cons. And so one of the, one of the big things is that you need a lot of land to do land application. Um, and so you need to, in one instance, you have to store the water, right? Yeah, typically in most states, you can't irrigate 24 uh, seven, uh, 365 days a year. You've got to store the water uh, during the winter months and then get rid of that water uh, during the summer months. And so that takes up a lot of storage volume and you got to have the land in order to build the storage scheme to store that water so you can get rid of it during the, the warmer times. Um, and once you have that storage lagoon, a lot of times you need to aerate that storage lagoon because if you let effluent water, even though it's relatively clean, just sit there, right, for a long period of time, it's going to grow algae, it could potentially have odors, it could have low dissolved oxygen levels, uh, and it can be a real nuisance. So you've got to maintain that storage lagoon. Uh, once you store it, you've got to have the land to actually land apply it. And in a lot of states, the, the really the only option to do this is for a municipality or for an industry to buy the land and own the land and maintain the land where it's being land applied. 
and depending on the type of soils that you have you can you, you might have to have more acreage or less acreage uh, basically and so it can be uh, very expensive to go out and buy this land this irrig ir irrigation land uh, in order to have enough of it because some in some cases you need lots of acres um, so there's a fairly high upfront cost to to doing land application and, and in a lot of cases say oh, about 50% or more uh, it's more cost effective just to upgrade the lagoon on the front end to meet the ammonia limit or the discharge limit you're trying to get away from uh, than it is to, to buy all the land and, and build the storage lagoons in order to land apply. Um, so that's probably a really, really big uh, con and something that should be paid attention to. The second thing is from an operations point of view, it I feel like some people don't quite fully understand. Uh, the implication operationally. So I used to work for a company that uh, operated land application systems. So I had firsthand knowledge talking to the operators. They come in the office, you know, uh, during the summertime, and you know you could only land apply for a certain period of year. And in Illinois, where we're at, it's like 156 days was the land application, you, and you had to get rid of all the water for the whole entire year, 156 days, and you can only land apply at a certain rate right and you can only land apply longer than 24 hours you had to be at least 24 hours after a rain event so sometimes in the summer you know they really had to be on it you know you wake up in the morning you got to look at the weather you got to know how much water you can put out there today and do the math on that and make sure it's not going to rain and if it rains you got to run out there and shut everything off because you're not supposed to irrigate when it's raining um, and then when it would get to the end of the year every year without fail it was a fire drill you know they're trying to get rid of that water how do we get rid of that water you know like we, we won't, we've got you know, two million gallons left and we've only got 30 more days of irrig irrigation time to get rid of it. How do we pump, pump, baby pump, you know? And, um, and so often it was, it, it was quite tricky. And, and um, actually the company I used to work for used to get called in to, to situations where the operator couldn't do it. And because we were the experts at doing it, we would get out there and get rid of that water. And so I think from an operational point of view, it is not as simple as you would think. And I would even make the argument that having a, a nitrification system on the back end of your lagoon is easier to operate because the water just flows in, it flows out. You got a blower to maintain. And as long as you can keep that, that thing running, you're, you're good to go relative to trying to do all this math to figure out how to get rid of the water. The third thing is that you have to maintain the irrigation equipment. Um, and so it is very common to see that you will get, if you have a center pivot rig, for example, uh, for irrigation, that the track needs to be maintained around that, that the wheels fall off the center pivot rig or the tires burst, or you have clogged irrigation heads. Uh, and that was also something that we ran into when I worked at uh, my previous company. It was always something to be maintained on that, always something to need to be replaced on that. This irrigation head's not working. This, you know, there's a divot in the center pivot track that needs to be replaced and so on. And so that was always a bit of a maintenance hassle as well. So those are the main things. I think it's not as straightforward as some people might want it to think it to be. It sounds like a great idea on the surface in terms of not having a discharge permit, but you really got to be careful and really pay attention to those operational concerns because those can eat you alive from, from a manpower and cost point of view. Um, so if you are going to do land application, what we've also found, and this was actually found in the, in the Journal of uh, Irrigation Engineering, a study that was found that aeration that, uh, that land application systems that have lagoon aer aeration in the lagoons previously operated much more effectively than those that do not. Uh, and the reason being is that lagoons with aeration in them tend to have less algae, tend to have lower BOD and lower TSS, so less things that can clog those filter heads and just improve the overall operation uh, of the system. So uh, aeration is, is something that can really enhance the performance of a land application system according to that study and we'll, we'll definitely uh, cite it here in our video blog uh, and in our blog on our website when we post this video so you can look it up. But we obviously have a great aeration system here in our Mars aeration system. It's designed to be dropped into a lagoon, it's completely portable and provide aeration and mixing uh, simultaneously and really help you treat that wastewater to the best possible 
uh, standard. So thanks for listening today. If you're interested in this, you like this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We also have a blog on our website uh, and we have a Facebook group where we try to connect Lagoon operators with Lagoon operators so they can help them doing better. And if you go to tpenv.com forward slash LDIB, which you'll see at the bottom of the screen here and register for all three of those things, we will send you our free Lagoons Do It Better camo hat. So thanks for listening today and I'll see you next time.